I see a uh, spaceman. I, I remember you asking in the last stream, spaceman, that uh, he, he was looking. Basically, he was looking for um, tutorials on VR, and uh, I, I don't think he. I linked it on the clip. There's a clip out there from that uh, that stream where we, where Jason talked about some Udemy courses, and actually mentioned that Unity has a has a VR course out now. Um, so if anyone can link that to for spaceman, uh, but spaceman, if you go out on the channel, look in the clip section, you you should find the one about Udemy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and on a more broad answer to that question, um, there's not that many courses or suggestions on how to do VR stuff. I know um, Unity 3D College has a couple that's worth a recommendation, yep, a yep. friend of ours. Other than that, the problem is the the technology stack they're built on. Same with AR, they're both using some framework. So in the case of VR, you've either got the Steam VR stack or you've got the Oculus stack, and they change. Like I've been doing this specifically, been doing VR for two and a half, three years, and it changes every, at least every six months-ish. Mm. And you're it's competing with those changes on top of Unity changes, and it's just not worth it for a lot of uh, course developers to dedicate that much time making a course that's going to change that often for the setup portion. And that's only for the setup bit that pertains to VR. Because once you've set it up for VR, other than that, it's just a game. So there's a lot of kind of highfalutin talk about how VR is a unique in whatever concept, and you, you have to be very specifically good at VR. That is technically true insofar as you need to know what makes VR good. You need to know mm. how scale it works. You need to know how to um, use presence and how to hit the lower frame, hit the lower um, reprojection rate so that you get high frame rates and stuff. Like you need, there's a lot of stuff you need to know to make an optimized VR game. But from a game design or gameplay perspective, you don't need to know that much. Once you set up a VR camera, it's just a game in Unity. So 90% of what you learn in any other 3D programming course will apply to VR. The only VR specific stuff is how do you set up the SDKs and how do you optimize and make um, kind of comfortable UX and UI experiences. And quite frankly, no course is going to teach you the UI and UX stuff. That's trial and error and looking at other games and doing your own research. And most courses don't want to spend the time it takes to set you up with a stack that's going to change in six months. So the answer is you're not really going to find one, at least not until, I don't know. Actually, no, I just don't think you'll find one. There's a few for AR. It's a little bit quicker for a roundabout turnaround time. But again, same thing applies. For the most part, you're not going to find very specific courses. You're going to find Unity courses, and then you're going to find maybe a YouTube video online where someone shows you how to set up the SDK and put those two together and you have your course, you know? Well, I've never done VR development. I've been wanting to. I mean, honestly, I've just been wanting to get VR because it just seems awesome. Um, but what develop, like what percentage of a, I mean, that's kind of a broad question, but what percentage of a project could you develop before you absolutely needed to say, okay, and now I need to, get the SDKs involved uh, of a VR game. You know uh, what I mean? I'm, I'm a bad candidate for this because you know my stance in terms of um, separation to concern. Oh, fair enough. I, I, already devent, I already spend 90% of my code not in Unity. And so when I do VR stuff, it already is not in Unity. And even when I do bring it in, um, I personally hate developing with the SDKs because if you put the SDKs in, you have to put a headset on every time you want to test it because this has infuriated me since the day they did this. But way back in the DK1 days, there wasn't a platform system. It was just a headset. You put it on, and that's your headset. Done. You know what I mean? Uh, and even more so than that, it didn't have an internal sensor. So because it was a cheap dev kit or cheaper than the others, you could hold it in your hand, and you could just test like this, just rotating it and sort of look at your screen and see what you're seeing. Obviously, you get the better experience with the headset on, but if you're taking a headset on and off to debug lines of code for the space of a few hours, that gets very tedious. And what we used to do is used to take the straps off and hold it like goggles and for testing. But with the later headsets, the entire head clamp is is like mounted to it, so you can't take the clamp off, mm -hmm. and the sensor can't be disabled. So you literally have to have your finger pressed over its sensor on the inside to get it to register as being on, which is a cool feature for various reasons. Like you have lots of standby stuff you can do, but it's bloody terrible to dev with. So in short, I do as much as I physically can outside of Unity, the, or outside of Unity, and then what I, whenever I'm in Unity, I do as much as I can outside of the headset. So the stuff that requires the headset really comes down to experience, checking the scale is right, the distance is right, um, checking that you've your UI is correctly placed at a good range, that your Raycast controller works correctly. But again, you can test most of the Raycast stuff outside of it. Um, it mostly comes down to experience and, and in terms of like literally testing how it plays and the, the gameplay loop and stuff. So yeah, I, I really just try not to put VR in my VR as much as possible <laughs> because it's, because uh, again, 
a lot of people used to say it was it, it was a, it's personal it's a separate skill to have and it kind of is like it does require an awful lot of knowledge in terms of how people will experience your your project and and there's a lot of really annoying nuance nuisance things that you're not going to get unless you're doing VR like you're going to learn a lot about very specifically about things like overdraw and and some really interesting stuff in terms of um like lines Jesus lines are a pain inside of a VR because of the aliasing you're going to get a lot of really true black is another one you have to manage certain color stuff there's a lot of really nuanced stuff but you're only going to get that midway through a VR project realistically um most of what is a VR project comes down to how do you take a 3D spaced camera and just make the game good for that camera. So, yeah, I don't know. It's not as it's not as all encompassing as people think to say make a VR game, but the stuff that'll take your time and requires the expertise is not the game stuff. The game stuff is still moving prefabs around and placing box colliders and doing raycast. Like 90% of what makes a VR game is still a game. So I wouldn't be too worried if, if you're holding back on a project because you're, you're waiting for VR stuff, test it with a character controller. You're not going to get the scale. You're not going to get some of the other stuff. But if you measure your boxes out, you can get um. There's a couple of great assets on the store. In fact, a friend of mine made one, uh, Dark Akuma. He made an asset specifically for VR, which will let you change the transform uh, gizmo to being in uh, meters and like changing all the different measurements and to actually show you drawn measurements in the scene for, for how wide and deep certain areas are, which will allow you to basically test your scale for VR. And that's about the one thing you want to really get right. Get make sure that the world scale looks good. So yeah, I don't know. Not VR I, I wouldn't be too bogged down on finding VR as a course. Because mm. that's such a small percentage of, of you know, you're better off find a 3D course, make a 3D game, watch GDC and Unite Talks from VR developers. Um the guys behind uh uh which which games would be very good. Uh, Cloudhead do some really good course or courses. I think talks on stuff. Uh, Holden does another great one on GDC. This is, I, I can again I can I'll come up with some collection of them. But realistically, just go to GDC talks and go to Unite talks. And there are VR devs who do talks on on the nuanced things you want to be careful of for VR. But other than that, most of it's just make a VR game, make a 3D game, and put VR in it. You know. We make a good point. Um... You know, VR is a more extreme example where, you know, as you develop anything, you always want to close the feedback loop as tight as possible. And so obviously when you're thinking about VR, you're not going to be developing something, you know, making a change to your code, putting on the headset, making sure that little change work, taking off the headset and and making more changes. It's just that's not a gr that's not a good iteration cycle at all. Um, and I would even argue that the same thing applies to making code changes and then running your game directly in Unity just to test one little thing. I, I think that as if you as if you're going to test anything, you should do as much as you can in the code, including writing unit tests and integration tests. Um, and the way you do that is something we talked about in the last stream, which is kind of an extreme example. Is the way Jason and I and, and many other Unity developers work is that we'll separate. Um, we'll separate our project into multiple DLLs. So we'll, we'll make just, we'll write just regular plain old C sharp code, um, put that into its own project and then reference that project, that DLL in a unity project. And, and in that way you can actually test the plain C sharp code separately. You know, you get all the advantages, all the advantages of running unit tests without, um, the overhead of mono behaviors and, and having to run your scene. Um, a, a lighter weight version of that would be if in your in your own project, in your Unity project, you can just separate your, I guess what you can call like your library code or your core code. Um, as long as you keep it separate from your Unity code, then you can just you can follow the same uh, idea of, of just writing as much as you can and unit testing as much as you can using automated tests so that you you close that feedback loop and you're not, um, you know, you're not killing yourself waiting for things like unity to start up. <clears throat> yeah. The, the, just the general loading times. Like it, it's one of those things that you, you take for granted when you're a, a line of business developer. I never thought about it before, but going from, you know, you build your code, you press play. It's a, it's a desktop app. There's no, you know, you're, you're not accessing any graphics libraries. It's just, there is a window that's drawn <laughs> and it has a couple of fields on it. It's like, <laughs> Like it, it didn't really hit me until I started doing game dev work on projects that are like 20 gig in size and 
the load time is insanity and you're waiting there for 15 minutes and god forbid you accidentally move your mouse across the scene view nudge a box all of a sudden the you know it, the light baker goes oh hang on a second everything's in a new position i have to rebake your entire project again let's start from scratch it's like oh no <laughs> then you're <laughs> then you're stuck waiting for 15 minutes while everything grays out and, and starts you know filling up again and by the way my computer's not like that bad i've got dual 1080s in it i should be able to be processing my lighting efficiently but no even even with a decent computer it's still going to take you forever again. listen